Well, there are a few certainties in any general election campaign. One thing does seem to be looking increasingly likely, though, this year is that smaller parties will make a bigger impact. The televised leaders' debate last week put seven parties centre stage with Plaid Cymru. Amongst them, we'll be speaking to party leaders in the run up to May the 7th. And we start today with Leanne Wood from Plaid Cymru. She's the first female leader of the party, which won 11.3% of the vote in Wales in 2010, translating into three MPs in the last parliament. Well, key pledges for Plaid Cymru include scrapping the Trident nuclear programme, a thousand new doctors in Wales and a higher minimum wage. Leanne Wood, uh, the leader of Plaid Cymru, joins us now. Very good morning to you. Um, take, talk to us about leaders' debate. What was that like for you? Was that an a alarming, scary moment? It was a very interesting experience and I think it was very useful for people to see the wide range of public opinion that's available uh, for them ahead of the election and there was at one point only going to be the four male party leaders there and uh, we said at the time that with those four shades of Westminster Grey there was very little between them. They looked. Mm -hmm very similar to each other and they were sounding the same. So the fact that there were three women there from three different parties putting forward an alternative position to more cuts and austerity, I think it was good view in as well. Um, it also puts you under pressure, doesn't it? And people very much focusing on your policies. So let's do exactly that now. Let's talk about money. For example, the deficit. When would you, when would you pay it off and how are you going to do that? Well, we're not prepared to put an artificial deadline on cutting the deficit because our argument is that things like job creation and ensuring that there's enough money in the tax pot should be a priority over setting. So you won't put a date on it? No, we're not prepared to put a date on it. We can balance the books over a longer period of time and under our calculations, the deficit can be cut from 90 billion down to 30 billion by 2020, but we see no reason for putting an arbitrary deadline on this. Okay, and remember, so, so in terms of that's a large amount of money to bring it down by. How would you do that? Well, there are um, various ways that we could make cuts that don't impact on the poorest in society. You've mentioned Trident replacement. That will cost £100 billion over 40 years. There are also measures that we've proposed, like making changes to the National Insurance Contribution Scheme, which could raise £10 billion. Who would that, be? Who would that impact that on? That would then? impact on the, the highest earners. And similarly, to cut um, the relief to... Uh, the highest earning pensioners could net another uh, £10 billion. Pounds. So, what, what sort of relief for pensioners were you talking about? What, what would you be getting rid of for them? For the highest, um, the, the people who, who take the highest packages of pensions currently get quite a large amount of tax relief on that. And we would argue that uh, they should not receive that tax, tax relief. In order to try and balance this situation, whereby um, so far under austerity, it's the people who earn the least who have paid the most, and um, that is, is very unfair. So you talk about where some of the cuts might be coming and you've talked about pensions. As, uh, talk about um, other increases. For example, I know you're looking for £1.2 billion pounds extra for Wales. Where would that come from? How would you find that kind of money? Well, that would come from the, the general treasury pot. Right, so from, what, from other voters from other parts of the UK? Well, from the whole, um, the, the taxation pot uh, that is, is raised by Westminster, at the moment, if we were um, funded the same per head as Scotland, that would result in an additional £1.2 billion into the Welsh Bloc grant. And we see no reason why Wales should be treated differently okay, but to Scotland. What about being treated differently to England? Because uh, spending per head in Wales at the moment is higher than England. So why should you be different from England? Well, there are um, communities uh, in many parts of England that could pay, make a claim for additional resources and particularly when so many organisations have taken so many cuts in recent times. We stand in common cause with those people in communities in the north of England, in the Midlands, in Cornwall who are struggling with so their public services Are you saying that well? they too should get extra money? Is that what you would be doing in Parliament? Well, I think that public services should be paid for by general taxation. We've got a debate about the NHS today now where the Conservatives and Labour are talking about access to GP appointments in England. Well, in Wales, we've got fewer doctors per head of the population than 
almost every other nation in the European Union. And we've got to wait a lot longer in Wales for a GP appointment. Many people wait up to three weeks. So it's that unfairness in the situation that we're trying to tackle. And we need to rebalance wealth throughout the United Kingdom because far too much wealth is concentrated in and around the City of London. Uh, let's talk about um, what, what might happen in May. We don't know at this point. Mm -hmm. um, if there were to be a hung parliament, what is the one thing that your party would demand if you held the keys to power or some part of that? What would you want for from Westminster for Wales? What's the one thing? Well, we want to rebalance power and wealth, and that involves ending austerity uh, and cuts, but it also involves ensuring that Wales has enough money to invest okay, in our I public services. Okay, I ask for the one thing, because you talk about austerity, you know, that, that, that's so many questions. What's the one thing that would make a difference, that you would back a party? It's investment in our public services and job creation. That's the, the key um, question for us. But we have a number of priorities and in order to pay for uh, decent public services then there has to be the other side of the, the balance, balance in the books which is comes back to questions like trident, tax evasion um, and those other matters that can bring money into the tax pot. I'm interested um, as well um, how much how much you talk to Nicola Sturgeon for example, how much of this is a coordinated campaign? We speak fairly regularly and um, we're in touch uh, via messaging uh, as well uh, online and um, you know yeah we work we work together we've got a lo lot of common cause between Plaid Cymru and the SNP and there's a lot of common cause between Wales and Scotland particularly on this question of rebalancing power and so wealth. So if it came so down we to doing a deal together. you would you would be talking about it together would you is that how it would work? Well it depends on on the numbers we we've yet to have the election yet of course and people are yet to make up their minds but every indication is that neither of the two main parties have done enough to convince people that they deserve a majority so it's the smaller parties could well hold the balance of power and if we do then I'll be working with Nicola Sturgeon head in the SNP and also any Greens that are elected uh, in England to try to make sure that we are able to put the alternative to austerity after the next election. And do you have conversations about Prime Ministers? Uh, no, it's not about personalities, um, it's about politics and policies and we are keen to present that alternative to austerity regardless uh, as to who, who are the key people involved. Leanne Wood from Plaid Cymru, thanks for your time here this morning, thank you.